Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerSportsBetting.com. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there. Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, right now, the Texas Boxing Commission is investigating whether or not one of the guys in the corner, Alex Ariza, who used to work with several well-known fighters in the sport and who just had a fighter fail a test for the wrongful use of diuretic slash stimulants, apparently was caught on tape. The tape right now is on TMZ, the website, in the later rounds, either after the 10th or 11th rounds, with something on the towel slash gauze that he had, right? There's a different item on there that he puts on there. Then he wipes Marcus Maidana's brow with it between rounds. And then, of course, you see him seemingly wipe Maidana's mouth with it as Maidana inhales. Now let me just say a few things, okay? I know from experience, from watching the sport for a long time, that anytime anyone ever makes the contention that something somewhere isn't quite right, that person is viewed as a conspiracy theorist. That person is viewed as paranoid, as trying to dodge a fight or explain a fight result. It wasn't so long ago that Floyd Mayweather actually, you know, said he wanted drug testing. Seems uncontroversial. If you're interested in a level playing field, he himself was willing to submit to drug testing. He was only asking his opponent to submit to the same drug testing he was submitting to. And of course, Mayweather was viewed as paranoid. The opponent, who was being offered 50-50, walked away from the bargaining table over the drug testing issue. That's how big it was. And you had many old-timers, including guys I respect, like Marvelous Marvin Hagler, come out with opinions that Floyd was overreacting here and that Floyd was making an issue out of a non-issue. And then, of course, ever since that took place, several fighters have tested positive for performance-enhancing drugs. Several, right? Just Google it. And, of course, now you have many champions openly taking the same stance Floyd Mayweather has taken. You also have fighters submitting to voluntary VADA and other organizations, uh, year-round drug testing protocols, right? So, let's just quickly go through some of the things you need to think about before I make comments on Marcus Maidana and the uh, Adrian Broner fight and Alex Ariza, right? Let me just say this. If you think that boxing is a completely clean sport and that anyone with any concerns, is diluted, then how do you explain the proven wrongdoings that have happened in the sport? Forget PED use for a second. What about, and this is proven, the glove tampering in the Lewis Resto versus Billy Collins fight? Right, keep in mind, Resto has come clean years later. This is after Collins committed suicide. And Resto has conceded that his glove had less padding in it. Of course, Resto's trainer at the time, the person in the corner, and I'm not here for legal reasons, right? I'm not here making any allegations. I'm just stating some facts. The guy in Resto's corner was Panama Lewis. Right, Panama Lewis was a big name in boxing at the time. 
right? We now know that that glove tampering happened. Well, let me point out, you remember, Antonio Margarito had a substance on his gloves, right? Then we find out that this substance apparently could have become plaster, right? Plaster of Paris, right? It had sulfur in it and stuff like that. That's more recent, right? This is a sport where if someone is paranoid about glove tampering, they have multiple reasons to be. And these are just the ones we know of. Let me go one step further. Freddie Roach talks about a very well-known fighter who he, his guy was fighting. And Roach went over to the other dressing room to watch the glove wrapping. Same thing as in the Margarito case. Guy already had a glove wrap. Freddie demanded that the glove come off because, of course, the rules are such that you're supposed to be able to watch the gloves when they're being wrapped, you know, the hands when they're being wrapped. And, of course, Freddie claims that the gloves were tampered with. Well-known fighter. I'm not going to say his name here, but, again, I encourage everyone to Google it. Right? And keep in mind, this is not some crackpot talking about it. This is one of the sports elite trainers talking about it. So, of course, all they did, no suspensions or anything, all they did was cut the tampered hand wrap off the guy's hand and have him rewrap his hands. Here's some other things with boxing. Fighters throwing fights. Sounds preposterous. Jake LaMotta wrote a book in which he admitted that he threw a fight. Folks, it happens. You also had another well-known fighter, well-known, who actually sued when some publication claimed that he threw a fight. You know what? The jury heard the evidence. The jury ruled against him. The jury believed that the fighter had indeed thrown the fight. Right? Well-known Boxing Hall of Famer. Recently, too, just some other boxing idiosyncrasies. We've had fights where one guy starts to beat up the fighter that the promoter hopes wins the fight. And so, of course, the round ends early. Not by one or two seconds, but by dozens of seconds. We have one such fight on film here, right? On YouTube, Danny Williams, right? He's beating up some guy. Literally, the bell sounds something like a minute early on the round. Right? Even the promoter later had to admit that something was wrong there. That's the sport of boxing. By the way, the Danny Williams situation is different than the Francois Botha, Sonny Bill Williams situation, where as I make this video, I'm not even sure how many rounds that fight was supposed to be. Apparently, I'm not alone. Francois Botha, in the fight, didn't know how many rounds that fight was supposed to be. Right? Advertisements for the fight didn't know how many rounds that fight was supposed to be. Right? That's boxing. Let me talk about some other things, too. How about fighters being drug tested, sending somebody else into the room to take the test for them, and no one figuring it out until the fighter, in this case, Iron Mike Tyson, admits it after his career's over. Everyone should track Mike Tyson's mea culpas these days. Right? He's open in talking about what went on back then, and what went on, quite frankly, is shocking. Now, again, we're not talking about crazy sources. We're actually talking about the fighter himself telling you that he sent in somebody else to take the drug test. What about this one? This happened recently. It involves fighters still ranked. Could you imagine the fighters themselves agreeing on a post-fight drug test and then the boxing commission not taking the test? Claiming after the fact that they made a mistake? Folks, that's what happened in the Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. versus Marco Antonio Rubio fight. By the way, the commission that blew the post-fight drug test is the same boxing commission that's investigating what happened in the Maidana fight. Now let's talk about 
what's happening in boxing. You know, boxing is like baseball. Was in the 1990s, right? And early 21st century. Suddenly, guys were bigger, in shape, stronger, started doing things you hadn't seen done. Right? The game was very exciting. Bunch of guys hit 50 home runs. You knew the game was exciting, but you didn't want to know the details. And, of course, you had the cover stories. Right? Back then, I'm not kidding. I'm not making this up. I'm not that clever to make up some cover story this ridiculous. Back then, the speculation, after all these extra home runs were being hit, was that the baseballs were being wound too tightly. That was the theory. Go back and watch some of these all-star games. They actually openly talk about it on the air. The theory was that the baseballs were being made in a different location. And so, of course, something might be up with the baseballs. That's why so many guys were hitting the ball out of the park so often. Right? Well, let me tell you. All I can say is... Back then, the New York Yankees, who were playing in multiple World Series, right, signed guys like Jose Canseco. I'm not kidding. And several guys whose name appears in the Mitchell Report. Right, again, for legal reasons, I'm not going to name them. Right, but just do your own homework. Right, now you can imagine, there is plausible deniability for everyone. Right, the ball player who tests positive will claim that they relied on their trainer, right? The uh, or they'll blame a supplement that they took, right? Then, of course, the trainer claims that they were asked by the ball player for the steroids. Or the performance enhancers. And the ball player, of course, will then say, Well, how am I supposed to know what Winstrol is or you know what a performance enhancing drug is? Right? I was just putting something under my tongue, or I was just using some cream. How was I supposed to know that this was actually raising my testosterone? Now, it's just fact that years ago. Again, during this era, the San Francisco Giants allowed Barry Bonds' trainer Greg Anderson into the locker room, right? Of course, the owners are going to claim, we didn't know anything. We didn't know there was nothing untoward there, right? Greg Anderson, of course, would not testify in court, so he was in prison for a while. Court was trying to force him to testify. Barry Bonds, of course beat the rap but admitted that he took the cream and the clear but of course being a multi-million dollar baseball player whose livelihood depends on his physical condition Barry apparently relied on other people and did not know what he was taking that's his story c'est la vie right full disclosure I was once involved in a case ironically with Alan Ruby who was Barry Bonds's attorney at his trial, right? Well, my point is simply this. Today in boxing, we have a situation where we have strength and conditioning coaches, right? Who are openly involved with boxers, just like Greg Anderson was openly involved with Barry Bonds. Let me just say, I don't know if Greg gave Barry Anything that either he or Barry knew was a PED at the time, right? I'm not making that contention, although Barry admits to having the cream in the clear, right? But my point is simply this. In boxing, you have strength and conditioning coaches with access to the fighters before the fight and even in the corner during the fight, right? Now, for legal reasons, again, because th that's how litigious we are as a society, right? People's reputations are on the line. For legal reasons, let me say, I'm not accusing anyone of anything. 
Fighters can fail drug tests for a host of reasons, many not involving the strength and conditioning coach. But of course, let's talk about Alex Ariza. He may well have done nothing wrong in the Marcus Maidana incident, right? But we certainly won't find out whether or not he did since the evidence is inconclusive and since there's plausible deniability. Ariza admits that he had something on the towel or gauze, right? He admits he had another item on the towel or gauze. He denies that it was a pill or anything illegal, right? He claims it's just a gauze that he used to help wipe down his fighter, right? That's the story. I don't believe there's going to be any evidence that surfaces, any whatsoever, that contradicts that story, right? I'm not saying the story's right or wrong. I'm just saying, just like in the NFL, when they go to film review, there has to be conclusive proof to change the call. Right here, it's going to be murky. There's nothing, unless somebody says, yeah, you know, unless Marcus Madonna says, look, he gave me a stimulant. <laughs> unless somebody in the corner owns up to it or Alex Ariza makes some plea then the current story will be the final story, right? Because I've looked at that video several times and you can't tell what the item is. What's clear is that Ariz is holding a bunch of other similar items in his hand, right? He says he uses these gauzes all the time, right? Given that there are several fighters who have fought under Alex Ariza, right, with Ariza in his corner, right, I'm guessing that statement would be able to be confirmed or denied. I'm guessing Alex Ariza does use these vertically shaped gauzes all of the time. But here's the problem, right, and it's a big problem. There are two problems here. The first is it's Alex Ariza, and he just had a fighter, Brandon Rios, fail a test for a diuretic slash stimulant, right? That just happened. Now, Rios could have failed the test for a myriad of reasons, but understand, right? Let's get into pharmacology just for a second. This is different than an oil or water-based steroid. Understand to have a stimulant detected in your system, it's my understanding that you would have to have taken that stimulant literally shortly before the fight. In other words, steroids, I can cycle on steroids. It's actually a cycle then I can wean myself off steroids. So by the time the event takes place, I don't test positive for steroid usage. That's why you need protocols. That's why random testing is needed. Because you can't just test the guy the day of the event or the day of the weigh-in. Right? You need, really, year-round random testing if you're serious about catching up with PED users. But a stimulant is different. A stimulant implies a recklessness and a desperation where someone uses it literally right before the bout. Right? Or, if it's used as a diuretic, right before the weigh-in to try to get rid of water weight, right? And so the point is simply this. You know, we judge people by what they've done, right? If you're around too many smoky rooms, sooner or later someone is going to conclude you're the cause of the smoke, right? Now, Alex Ariza, all I can say is, 
This is awfully bad timing for him. Right? Brandon Rios was fighting Manny Pacquiao, high profile fight. How could Brandon Rios possibly have had a stimulant in his system when he was tested? How's that even possible? Right? That's the troubling thing because Ariza wipes his cloth with this object in it right by Marcus Maidana's nose. And sadly, this is a fight where, right, we don't want guys getting any kind of boost, especially not during the championship rounds. Panama Lewis, the same guy who was in Lewis Resto's corner, happened to be in Aaron Pryor's corner during one of the greatest fights in history, his fight against Alexis Arguello, the first one. And it's sad. But there's a moment in the corner where he asked that Pryor get some water. A guy in the corner has the water bottle. Right on the film, Panama Lewis is heard saying something like, not that one, the one that I mixed. Two water bottles in the same corner. Right? Shouldn't water be water? Well, the sad thing is after Pryor, who sadly had his bouts of substance abuse, right? Look up Aaron Pryor's full biology, uh, excuse me, uh, biography, right? Aaron Pryor drinks from this second bottle, comes out energized, turns the fight, right? Turns the fight. Knocks out Alexis Arguello. Now, Panama Lewis, years later, claimed that the bottle that he mixed was Perrier water, carbonated water, and regular water. Right? Now, if true, he's in compliance with the rules. Because that's water. Right? You can only have water in the bottle. But how do we know? Was that an honest statement by Lewis? Or is that a thought out cover story to cover over something a little bit different? Well, all I can say is Marcus Maidana is very steadfast in saying nothing weird happened in the corner. Right? Alex Ariza, and I'll give him this, right, is. You know, cameras are around. He openly has several gauzes in the other hand, right? The video is consistent with what Ariza says, in my opinion, right? The sad part is it's a great performance by Marcus Maidana, right? This doesn't happen till toward the end of the fight. And it's cast a cloud over the win, right? And it's a great win. Right? Certainly this had nothing to do with Madonna knocking down Adrian Broner twice earlier in the fight. Right? But the sad truth is, as you look at the video, right? The video also leaves open another interpretation. Because as Abriza wipes this area on Madonna, Madonna inhales. Could be inadvertent. You know, you're in a physically demanding fight, you get to your corner. Yeah, you might be going, you might be taking deep breaths. You might be trying to get, you know, oxygen into your lungs. And the problem is we're in a plausible deniability culture, right? It's possible Madonna and everyone else in the corner is playing by the rules. Madonna might not even know that the gauze might have something on it, if it has something on it. So, that leads me to the second problem. The Texas Boxing Commission is the commission that's supposed to investigate this. Really? You're telling me that the commission that couldn't even conduct the post-fight drug test for Chavez Jr.? You're telling me that 
that commission that blew the Marco Antonio Rubio Chavez Jr. post-fight drug test is now going to be investigating this when the evidence is as murky as it is? Good luck. I'm expecting an announcement that they found nothing. That this item placed on the towel slash gauze by Alex Ariza and then brought to the face of Marcus Maidana was probably gauze. Right? I have to tell you, it looks curious to me, but the video is consistent with what Ariza has told reporters. So to sum up, what we need, and I'm serious about this, what we need is some protocol by which all of these fighters are immediately tested right after the fight. There should be literally a time limit on how much time they have between the end of the fight and when they're tested. Also, we need to realize that failing a test for stimulants is major, right? Because that implies doping right before the event. It's different than steroid cycling, right? I know to the public a PED is a PED. That's not the case, right? Sometimes when a guy fails a test and you find out that he took the drug that morning or the day before, that's more devastating. Adrian Broner fought a guy who actually failed a post-fight drug test for cocaine. You know, cocaine gets out of your system quickly. That means the guy was using coke, literally, in the window, the three days right before the fight. Right? And so here, the fact that Alex Ariza had a fighter fail a drug test shortly before this championship fight makes me wonder how he was in the corner since he wasn't the prime corner man. That was Robert Garcia. Right? So I'm a libertarian. I don't want a bunch of rules. I don't want this thing to be too overregulated. But I will say this, if the sport's going to have integrity, we do need post-fight rigorous drug testing right after the event. If a fighter has slipped something during the fight, theoretically it should show up immediately thereafter in the post-fight drug test. Right? And I don't want some lax commission doing the post-fight drug test. Maybe we need to farm that out to outfits like VADA. Maybe, in fact, the World Boxing Association or the World Boxing Council or the IBF, uh, maybe they need to say, look, if it's our fight, then even if the commission takes a sample, that sample has to be before us, right? Because we know in Mike Tyson's case, he wasn't even offering up the sample. Somebody else's sample was being tested, right? It needs to be in front of us, and we need to get half the sample so we can test it independently. Let me hear from you. Am I being paranoid here? Am I being crazy? I'm not accusing Marcus Maidana of cheating in any way, shape, or form. But my point is simply this. When there's a post-fight investigation on whether he cheated, and there's film footage out there, that hurts the sport, okay? I care deeply about the sport of boxing. Our sport shouldn't be hurt like this. When Mike Tyson's coming out and saying, yeah, you know, um, I had somebody else taking tests for me, that hurts the sport, right? When Freddie Roach says, hey, you know, forget Margarito. I once had a fight against an opponent who I saw with plastered gloves. That hurts the sport. Right? Just like they're trying to clean up baseball, we need to take some steps to try to clean up boxing. Rigorous post-fight drug tests, to me, seems to be needed, seems to be a basic threshold. If you can't pass a post-fight drug test, then you got problems, right? We shouldn't be focusing on videos of 
what the guy may have taken during the fight and speculating. We should be able to look at a post-fight drug test and actually have some indication one way or another. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.